Breaking how Faneka Ode begged me for job at Tiku Reviews. Hmm. So all these ones that Faneka is making noise. He actually begged Tinubu for job. I mean, I sorry, begged the uh, Atiku Abubakar for job. I understand when this FFK was in a uh, PDP, he was lambasting APC, lambasting Buhari, lambasting Tinubu and everybody. Okay. Since he left uh, 2007, that he left the office, his office as Minister of Aviation. Since that time, he has been jobless, and probably the little money he saved is finished. And when that money finished, probably that was when he started beating his wife and beating his family. Okay. And uh, after then, he started, when he was dealing with uh, APC, he was around asking Tinubu, sorry, asking uh, Atiku Abubakar for job, looking for placement. He actually looked for position in PDP. It was not given to him after all the struggle. And then he went to lobby with APC. APC finally gave him and now that's why he's every bad thing he said about APC, he has swallowed all of them now and now started defending APC because that is where his stomach is. That is the truth. Where a man's stomach is, that is where his mind is. That is exactly what is happening to FFK. Now, Atiku Abubakar has come out to reveal how Faneka Ode was begging him for job in those days. Let's see what Atiku has more to say. Atiku Abubakar, the People Democratic Party presidential candidate, has revealed that Femi Faneka Ode seizes every opportunity to attack him because he refused to hire the former minister as a spokesperson for his campaign council. Can you imagine? You see? So Atiku said this said this after Faneka Ode, a spokesman for the president-elect Bolatinubu, okay, accused him of sponsoring a defamatory report against the Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJN, in a bid to kick him out of office. Can you imagine? Faneka Ode's life story is one of anywhere beliefs. In 2018, he said he would rather die than join a filthy, rat-infested, sinking, uh, ship like the Alma Jiri People's Congress, that is APC, you see. Then when his pocket began to dry up, he embarked on a nebulous tour of PDP states in search of job. Immediately Lawan lost, Faneka Ode began begging associates of Atiku Abubakar to facilitate an appointment into the media team of the PDP. After he was rejected by Atiku's camp, Faneka Ode began following Tinubu all over the place in search of a position in the campaign. Now, after Tinubu's illegitimate victory, Faneka Ade is now lobbying for a new position in the ill-fated government that will be sent back in by the court. Frank Shaibu, the special assistant on public communication to Atiku, said in a statement. Yeah. <laughs> Faneka Ade had claimed that earlier media uh, reports alleging that CJN Luka Odea Ariwala traveled to London to uh, secretly meet with Tinubu uh, was sponsored by Atiku and Peter Obi, respective candidates of the PDP and Labour Party in the February 25, 2023 presidential election. Can you imagine? So the news or the rumor or the story that Ariwala, Justice Ariwala, went to London to meet with Tinubu secretly to, you know, um, uh, concerning Nigerian government, that he was a Tiku Abubakar and Peter Obi that peddled that information. That is what Faneka is trying to say here in a bid to get the Chief Justice out of uh, out of office. Now, for FFQ, every day they are creating propaganda of any kind. What Peter Obi and Atiku and their talks did to the CJN is despicable. They lied on him, defamed him, rubbished his reputation and sought to humiliate, blackmail, undermine, destroy, and disgrace him out of office. These savages and barbarians seek to destroy all our reverend institutions, the former minister tweeted on Friday. Can you imagine? Atiku and Obi are both challenging the victory of Tinubu at the presidential election petition court. Ariwala will appoint and possibly lead the justice that we hear Atiku and Peter Obi's appeals against Tinubu's victory defending, depending on the outcome of the duo's suits at the tribunal. Meanwhile, in his response to 
Faneka Ode, article called on the Department of State Services to arrest the former minister for making statements capable of setting the country on fire. The former vice president also commended Ben Lowlin Jones, the British Deputy High Commissioner in Lagos, for naming Faneka Ode among prominent Nigerians who are inciting violence in the country. Article urged the DSS to give them to give attention to Lowlin Jones report by arresting Faneka Ode to prevent him from making further insightful remarks. We acknowledge as timely the statement of the DSS call on politicians not to overheat the polity, but we call on the security agency to arrest Faneka Ode for not heeding the counsel of the DSS when he threatened to make Nigeria ungovernable. Yeah. The DSS rightly invited Faneka Ode after he made false claims about article planning a coup back in January and asked him to report daily. But for some reasons, he was continued. He has continued unhinged to spew hate. Recently, we even justified the attacks and the profiling of the Igbo in the recently concluded fraudulent governorship election in Lagos State. He has also threatened to make the country ungovernable if Tinubu is not sworn in. I think it is good time to remind the DSS that Femi Faneka Ode has returned to his old ways. Now he is threatening fire and brimstone over a most contentious election which Nigerians have refused to endorse or celebrate one full month after the collection, uh, collective disenfranchisement of the electorate. Faneka Ode is threatening that he and some other despicable uh, despirados will make Nigeria ungovernable if Tinubu is not inaugurated in May 29, 2023. It is time to take in Faneka Ode so he doesn't inflame any further. The already combustible national angst article stated. Yeah. So from what article is saying, okay, through Frank Shaibu, Faneka Ode need to be arrested, need to be locked up, need to be secured somewhere so that he can he will stop inflaming Nigeria. So he will stop inciting violence in Nigeria. Okay. Nigerian uh, political system is already inflamed and we don't want anybody to add that uh, uh, fuel to that uh, inflammation. Okay, so so what Atiku is saying is that uh, Tinubu, lo I mean, uh, FFK lobbied him to become a member of the campaign council, but he rejected him. It was after rejecting him that he went back to start following Tinubu up and down, asking for position before he was integrated into Tinubu's uh, media presidential campaign media team okay so unfortunately uh ffk is somebody that is that does not have shame he can just say anything anywhere he's so reckless and ruthless and he's not matured in everything he's doing that is the truth okay and he does not even care what people say about him he's desperate and he can say anything by the time he meets his own waterloo now he will start forming repentance and start looking for 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 pity where there may not be any pity for him okay so that is what uh Atiku is saying here that prior to this uh, ffk joining apc he came to pdp to beg for position in the presidential campaign council but he was rejected before he went to start fully to new and down and then secured a position in apc now because he secured a position in apc everything he has said about apc he has forgotten them now and swallowed them all of them and now uh, supporting APC desperately. Just like what uh, uh, Oshomole said in 2019, that no matter how dirty your sins are, once you join APC, your sins are forgiven. That is exactly what FFK is enjoying APC. But how long will they continue to enjoy that? That is a story for another day. So thank you for listening and let's have your comment.